Afternoon everybody and welcome to Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Park. Uh, we are back after a couple of weeks away uh, to continue our Facebook Live videos and continue our world tour. Uh, as you can see today I am in with our ring-tailed lemurs uh, as we are still on the island of Madagascar as part of the world tour. Uh, so my name's Gareth and I will uh, talk you through um, everything about these guys today in the video. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to send them in. Uh, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Um, otherwise, I will just try and teach you something um, about these lovely lemurs. Hi Tim, good to see you watching today. Right then guys, so ring-tailed lemurs are a species of lemur. They're probably the most well-known species of lemur. Um, made famous through um, films such as Madagascar um, with, with King Julian uh, in, in, in that franchise um, and they are very obviously striking animals with their, their ring tails um, and their, their rather cute appearance um, so yeah they are probably the most well known species of lemur uh, in the world we have got a group of four ring tailed lemurs here uh, at the park uh, we can see three of them at the moment uh, the one in the middle there is our female Matty uh, Matty was born here in 2014, I do believe, so she is about nine years old now. Um, then we have the other two in shot at the moment are Sir, uh, Sergio and Carlos, um, who I can't actually tell apart. They are twins, uh, and they are half-brothers half to Matty. Um, these two were both born here, again, uh, at the park, um, and these guys were born in 2021, I do believe, so they are... Uh, just over two years old now. Um, our final member of this uh, group of lemurs is our male Derek. Um, Derek is inside at the moment but I'll point him out if he, if he does pop out. Um, yeah so Derek is, uh, he is, what is he, I think he's five years old. Um, he was born at Chester Zoo uh, and he moved here with us um, in 2020 I do believe. Um, uh, and he is father to Sergio and Carlos here. So, um, so yeah, an interesting group dynamic. Um, half brothers and sisters and things like that. So, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, nice little, nice little dynamic. Um, it seems to work well. So that's the the main thing. Ah, lovely Tim. I will try and keep my eye out for you. Hope you're enjoying your visit so far today. Right then, so ring-tailed lemurs are um, found on the island of Madagascar, as with all lemur species. Hello, what are you doing, mate? You want to say hello? Um, yeah, so as with all lemur species, they are found on Madagascar. Um, they are an endangered species on the ICN Red List. Uh, you might be surprised to hear there's, um, yeah, there's only actually thought to be around 2,000 of these guys left out in the wild in Madagascar. Um, there are probably more captive individuals than, than wild individuals as it stands at the moment. Um, so yeah, um, even though they are such a well-known species, um, they, they are really struggling out in the wild. Um, so they are found in the southern areas of Madagascar and southwestern Madagascar. Um, and yeah, you get an awful lot of slash and burn um, for agriculture, uh, so the forests are being taken down quite quickly. Um, a lot of uh, forests are also being taken for um, woods, hardwoods, and quite expensive hardwoods and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, they um, they are struggling out in the wild, which is a, a real shame. Um, as I've said with the, the previous lima videos, lemurs are the, the most threatened group of mammals on the planet. Um, so, so yeah, unfortunately, these guys are no exception to that. Hiya Judith, hope you're okay today. Ah yes, happy birthday too, Tim. Apologies, I, I didn't, didn't see that little bit of your, your message, but um, yeah, happy birthday. Hope you're having a good day. So, ring-tailed lemurs, um, like I say, I found in the southern portion of Madagascar uh, and they can inhabit quite a range of habitats 
Um, they can be found in uh, rainforests and um, kind of uh, riverside forests and things like that. Um, but they can also be found in kind of scrubland and arid scrubland. There is also a group that actually lives in, um, lives quite high up a, um, I think up a mountain or a, a hill or a mountain, not sure which one it is. But um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're able to actually withstand kind of quite low temperatures as well. I think I read last night, the species as a whole can, um, can um, yeah, withstand temperatures from around minus 12 all the way up to about 40 degrees. So, um, so yeah. Quite adaptable species um, are the ring-tailed lemur. So yeah, deforestation is is the main cause of their um, endangerment in the wild. Tim, um, you do also get some taken for pets and some taken as bush meat for for food and things like that. But um, but yeah, deforestation is is a, a real issue over in in Madagascar. So these guys are the most terrestrial species of lemur. Um, they spend the out of all the lemurs, they spend the most time um, wandering around on the floor, uh, and they're fairly happy being kind of on the ground rather than up in the trees. Um, they do still spend the majority of their time um, up in up in the trees or, or, or up off the ground somewhere. But um, but yeah, out of all the lemur species, they are they are the ones that are happiest to, to come down to, to ground level. Oh. So there's Derek sticking his head out of the other hatch there. Yeah, Judith. So um, so yeah, we've we've got a new kind of climbing frame up in here for them at the moment, uh, which we can see here, which um has got quite a lot of nice tall poles for them, which they can jump between and and leap between, which um makes them work out a little bit more. Um, Gives them a little bit more exercise, um, and yeah, it's, it's very impressive when you do see them very effortlessly jumping between between the poles. So um, yeah, hopefully, whenever anyone visits, you can you can see that in person for yourself. Right, we'll go and have a look at Derek. Now he's just come out. Hello, my friend. Hello, matey. So yeah, we've we've bred um, ring-tailed lemurs here um, fairly frequently. Um, we've had a good number of youngsters here in the past um, unfortunately a few years ago well about five six years ago now we, we did have an illness go through our kind of um, not original group but um, our our group at the time which which did um, mean we lost quite a lot of our, our group which is why we then ended up bringing in Derek um, Derek bred with Cara our main female at the time um, and then unfortunately Cara passed away um, from, from cancer. Um, and yeah, we were hoping Matty here would, would breed. Um, unfortunately, she, she uh, hasn't. Um, we do think she may be infertile. Um, she did have a contraceptive implant when she was younger to stop her breeding with um, her brothers or her um, father. Um, but yeah, sometimes these implants can actually um, make an animal infertile for the rest of their life so that's a possibility of what's happened um, so yeah we will we will see they might surprise us but at the moment they, they seem to be in a bit of a non-breeding situation so so yeah um, but that's okay the the captive population is 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 quite large and is doing very well like I think these guys are the most um, numerous species of primate in the um, in the world uh, in captivity, sorry, in the world. Um, so, so yeah, the captive population is doing very well. They're not currently, um, what's the word, allocated for, for reintroduction as a species, um, mainly because the situation out in Madagascar is is fairly awful. Um, there would be very little point in, um, in in sending captive bred individuals back out into the wild at the moment. But um, kind of soft introductions have taken place in wild areas of America, um, just in controlled kind of reserves to see if lemurs are able to kind of rewild themselves. Um, and yeah, they're, they're able to do just fine. Um, so in the future, if things, um, if things do improve, uh, then, then yeah, we'll, um, we will see, um, 
about reintroductions at some point for this species, I'm sure. Hello, you're coming to say hello. So Tim, uh, Matty, uh, well the three in picture now, Matty, Sergio and Carlos were all born here. Matty is about nine years old. Um, actually no, I think she might be getting up to ten years old now. Yeah, she might be ten. Nine or ten. No, she will be nine. Apologies. Uh, and then these two are both two years old. And then yeah, Derek came to us in, I believe it was 2020. Um, might have been 2019 actually. Um, Yes, it would have been 2019, actually, I do believe. So, so yeah, um, Derek is the only one here who hasn't been born here. But, um, but yeah, the, the other three have, have lived their whole lives here. So in the wild, these guys will eat um, a range of fruits and flowers and uh, leaves, nectar. Uh, they will also take um, small vertebrate and invertebrate prey, eggs. Uh, they are omnivorous, so, um, so yeah. They, they are able to eat a nice range of things. The majority of the diet that we give here is vegetable based, uh, but they do get, um, they do get some fruit um, along with different protein items such as eggs, chickpeas, um, fruit and nut mix, stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah, they've got um, a nice little varied diet. Normally they live in troops of um, kind of six to 15 individuals, uh, although troops can end up being a lot larger, up to around about um, 40 individuals in, in certain instances. Um, and they do have quite a range of vocalisations, anything from purrs to chuffs to loud wails and, and yells. Um, so, so yeah, um, they are quite complex with communication. Um, currently doing a little bit of scent marking there. That is uh, Derek. Um, yeah, you can see scent glands on these guys. Uh, you've got those black marks on the wrist there, are scent glands. Um, so what males will do is they will, um, when it's coming to breeding season, they will rub those scent marks all over their, sorry, their um, scent glands all over their tail. Um, and then have what we call a stink fight, where they will wash their tail at, um, at other males um, to, to try to to win over girls, um, whoever's the smelliest wins, which is an interesting way of working out <laughs> working out who gets to breed. So the ring tail, where they get their name, um, is made up of uh, well, obviously black and white rings. Um, normally, twelve or thirteen of each colour, uh, always ending in a black tip. Um, so yeah, obviously as it gets further down, you can see it becomes less and less pronounced, um, the rings, but, but yeah, they, they, do, um, they do pretty much always have um, 12 or 13, I believe, rings of each colour. And yeah, they're just, um, ring tadlings are just lovely. Uh, this group in particular at the moment is it's nice and calm and nice and settled which is what we like. Hi guys, uh, if you've got any last minute questions, feel free to send them in. Otherwise, we will call it a day there. Mm, munching on some sticks. No. So an interesting thing with ringtailed lemurs is the girls are in charge. So Matty is the, the most dominant individual in this um, in this group. Um, the boys all have to kind of do what she says. So that's why you've just seen a little bit of grooming from one of the other ones on on Matty here. She um, yeah, she's definitely in charge. So next week we'll be continuing our video, our Facebook Live World Tour. Um, I think we'll um, probably, depending on the weather, we'll, we'll see. We might be able to see the radiated tortoises if the weather's nice and they're out and about. If not, then we'll probably move back over to mainland Africa um, and we will, but we will work that out next week, see what the weather's doing for, for next Wednesday.
Right guys, I think we will call it a day there. Um, so thank you for tuning in. I know we've been away for a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, thank you for tuning in as ever. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, and yeah, we will be back next Wednesday um, for the, the next stop on our world tour. All right, cheers guys. See you next week.